Welcome to Didactics with David Lopez. Today, I'm gonna talk about the differences between using PayPal, Stripe, and a payment gateway like Authorize.net. Just to give you some quick background, I've been in the credit card processing industry a little over seven years, and I specifically specialize in setting up online merchants and online businesses to accept credit cards. I deal with mostly stuff that's considered high risk, but I've worked with every single type of business out there at this point. Now, the very common question is, when you're starting your business, or you might have a business, but you want to explore other options as far as getting set up to accept credit cards, you want to know the differences between rates, functionality, usability, and things like customer service. So the most popular and the longest standing credit card processing solution on the internet is PayPal, of course. PayPal is the first company that was out there allowing people to actually make transactions through the internet, mostly through eBay when they started from my understanding, and eventually eBay bought them out, which is how Elon Musk became a billionaire. We all kind of know, if you know about the tech industry, the PayPal mafia has been very influential in all sorts of Silicon Valley startups and in the startup tech world so if you're gonna get set up to accept credit cards for your online business PayPal is always a good go-to I think that every merchant accepting credit cards should have the option for PayPal however you should not only have just PayPal as an option I work with a lot of businesses and I work directly actually with Shopify Shopify sends a lot of their clients to me that can't use Shopify payments which is powered by Stripe I know from working with them that they've told me if, if they only have PayPal as the option to accept credit cards cards a lot of times what happens is you can see when someone gets to the checkout page and then they the sale drops off you can actually see that and you probably know uh, if you've ever purchased anything from someone using Shopify they actually will email you and say hey you left this in your shopping cart you, you sure you don't want to buy it which is actually genius and it's what makes Shopify one of the best platforms out there for e-commerce a lot of this is due to the PayPal only option so a, a good chunk I've heard anywhere from the number of like 30 to 60 percent of sales drop off at the checkout page if PayPal is the only option so a lot of people just simply don't like PayPal also the thing is when you choose to pay using PayPal you actually leave the website and you go to PayPal's pay page then the transaction is made through their server it's kind of cumbersome and as far as the customer or user experience is not the very best that being said I always think it should be an option there are people out there that love to use their PayPal account to buy things they probably have a standing balance that they would like to use they probably get points or some kinds of rewards that they might have set up through PayPal so always have that as an option but definitely don't have that as your only option now their rates are very comparable to stripe which will get to now 2.9 percent plus 30 cents a transaction the flat rate fee both of those companies basically have a flat rate fee there's a term called interchange interchange rates and what that means is Visa, MasterCard, Discover, Amex, all the different types of cards that have all sorts of different rewards attached to it frequent flyer miles points cashback percentages they get all of these cards cost you the business owner a different rate and there's about maybe 300 or so different card types and also depending on the MCC which stands for merchant category code that also affects on how much a particular card will cost you to accept so for instance if you have a cashback rewards card you'll notice that you get 3% on gas if you set it up to be that way that means that your card is more expensive for the gas station that you're using your credit card on than it would be when you go buy something at your local clothing boutique because of the MCC set up their their category code is for a gas station and they're specifically rewarding you for your purchases on gas and giving you cash back that's going to increase the actual rate for that transaction for them because they're the ones paying cash back points it, it, it's the business that pays for these rewards so the rates on interchange can range anywhere from I believe a debit card comes in to be for an online transaction I believe it comes out to be about half a percent or a quarter of a percent and obviously Amex probably more expensive I think it's like three, three point two on the on the you know the, the the most expensive Amex card out there, from my understanding. Basically, what the flat rate does, it just says you know you're getting charged basically three percent every month on your credit card fees, and we're not going to charge you a monthly, and that's what it is. And business owners really like this, and I understand why, because it's not confusing. You you know you're getting charged thirty cents a transaction. You can count the amount of transactions you made, and you know you're getting basically three percent as a fee for your credit card processing. However, if you're doing high volume, three percent is actually Actually quite a lot it starts to add up to a lot of money which takes me to authorize.net authorize.net advertises a very similar payment model however they use cybersource and that's actually their sister company that does the actual credit card processing authorize.net itself is just a payment gateway now what's the difference a payment gateway is stripe but they also do credit card processing there's actually two pieces the payment gateway is the front-end software that's integrated into your shopping cart that captures a transaction authorizes it with the bank to see if the money's available and then it 
batches out the daily deposits and sends it over to the credit card processor. Now the credit card processor usually has an underwriting bank that covers any sort of risk, FDIC insured. They're the ones that go to every particular transaction's bank on the card of your consumer, pull the money out and then deposit it in at the end of the day in a lump deposit of whatever your daily transactions or batch is. And batch is the term we use in my industry. Stripe acts as both. PayPal does too, but they're not a payment gateway like Stripe because Stripe actually, you integrate that into your shopping cart. If you use Shopify, you'll know that when you use Shopify payments, which is powered by Stripe, it's basically the same thing. You enter the credit card information directly on your website on your hosted website, on your hosted pay page. Unlike PayPal that sends you to another, to their page and to their website and their hosted web pay page, and then you enter the transaction there. So Stripe is a payment gateway much like Authorize.net. Authorize.net also is a payment gateway much like Stripe, and it can take place of Stripe in many instances. However, you don't have to use their credit card processing option, the flat rate fee that they offer, or even CyberSource, the sister company, that is actually the one taking the money from the banks or the lines of credit from your customers and then depositing it to your bank account. You could use a third-party credit card processor. You could use your own bank if you wanted to. You could use a company like mine. I work very closely with both Authorized on that and Shopify. They typically send me their clients that their bank or their credit card processing doesn't want to work with because it's considered high risk. And that's what you know I specialize in. I specialize in consulting businesses that are getting d declined or denied by other credit card processing services such as Stripe and getting them approved and set up by assisting them mitigate the risk and outlining their business outline and put it in helping them go through the process. Now, with a traditional merchant account attached to a payment gateway, and by the way, real quick, another thing on payment gateways, payment gateway software is very much the same as you would see the software that's built into traditional credit card terminals or point of sale systems where you swipe your card and you enter your PIN number. Uh, that device has software in it that encrypts and securely sends your credit card information over to the credit card processor. And that's basically the software that Authorize.net and Shopify have on the front end. When you work with a credit card processor that, that you plug into Authorize.net, there's a lot more room for saving money, especially if you're doing high volume. And I'll explain why. As I said earlier, interchange rates can vary. They're, they, you know, debit cards come in at under 1%. You know, and the most expensive card could be about 3% uh, or a little bit more. I, I believe Stripe eats the cost on the higher end credit card uh, transactions, but they make it up overall because of the, the, the lower interchange rate. So if you have a debit card transaction, let's just say it comes in at half a percent, they're charging you 3% or 2.9. That extra percentage is profit. So that the markup on that is basically two and a half percent if it's a half percent transaction that Visa is charging you for that debit card. So that's that's actually quite a, quite an expensive transaction. If you had a credit card processor set up with an account, the kinds that I set my customers up with, it's called Interchange Plus Pricing or Pass-Through Pricing. We pass through every single individual credit card transaction and then we add on our Interchange Plus fee. So our rate, let's say, would be half a percent. That debit card transaction would be half a percent plus our half a percent, which would make it 1%. And if you have a lot of these debit card transactions going through your account, even if you're getting charged the monthly fees for the gateway, which I believe is $10 and, and the monthly fee for a merchant account is also $10. Even if you're getting charged a monthly fee, even if you're getting charged like an annual fee of like $20 or some, some, I've seen other competitors of mine do like a $100 uh, annual fee. Even if you're paying the monthly PCI compliance fee, which is also another thing that's needed. It's, you know, I, I understand why people are annoyed by merchant accounts because there are all these line items, but you know, I can specifically go over each one. If you have any questions, reach out to me, email below, you can give me a call as well. I can explain them all to you and why they, they, they exist. A lot of them are just hard costs that are passed through through Visa MasterCard. But even if you have those extra little line item fees, when you do the effective rate, if your volume is $50,000 a month and you know, you're getting a good chunk of them with interchange cards that are at half a percent to 2%, you can see already that the added half a percent that we're, that we're adding on top of the interchange rates would be, you know, on average, maybe two and a half percent. So that's a whole half of a percent that you'd be saving and if you're doing 50k and up that actually adds up to some real money so if you're doing high volume you're doing 10 50k and up for sure use a payment gateway like authorize.net and get set up with a merchant account there, you know, there are hundreds of companies that do this and it gets very confusing. Everyone's trying to lower your rate or compete with rates. It, it is very much like a, a credit card or a loan, uh, to be honest with you. We assess the risk of the business, the type of products you're doing, your credit history, the likelihood that you're gonna be in business for three years to cover our cost of 
setting you up our time for setting you up so if you factor in all those things it really is where you know you get different rates for different merchants high risk tends to be more expensive especially since you're starting out however if you've been working with me for several years i've probably lowered your rate already a couple of times and i let all my clients know hey after like six months let's get a rate review let's see if we can get you a lower rate due to your risk if you haven't had any chargebacks if the account has been in good standing we can definitely try to lower that rate for you much like a loan or a line of credit the longer credit history you have the and the the proof that you're able to pay off your loans you're gonna get a lower interest rate you're gonna get more rewards attached to it so definitely that is where again it does get confusing it's a pain in the butt seeing all the different fees and not knowing what they are on your statement it is also it's not very convenient having all these processors quoting you different rates and then hiding fees somewhere else it is a very very confusing and even shady industry that i'm in so you have to just get someone that does a really good job explaining to you everything because in the end trust me you can save money using a credit card processor traditionally than using stripe now stripe now offers a very similar pricing structure that a traditional credit card processor would of course they they have a sales team and you probably can talk to someone like me but you know another downfall or another thing that i know uh, just talking to merchants that i've dealt with uh, stripe and paypal are not very not the best customer service friendly or customer service centric companies they're very large companies that deal with you know hundreds of thousands if not millions of businesses and it's very difficult to just get someone on the phone i know for the most part i believe it's all email support so if you have an issue or a question you're gonna have to email someone email them and then wait till someone actually gets to your email and then they'll respond to your email it's way more convenient to be able to pick up the phone and call someone and get your get your questions answered or get your problem at least fixed because lord knows i mean ability to accept credit cards is one of the most important things about a, a business especially online because it's really the only way you can accept accept uh, payments you can't take cash but yeah a company like the company that like i work with we yeah we can we are available during business hours you can call us uh, a lot of us also check emails even after at work hours so you do get that vip boutique experience working with a credit card processor depending on the one you work with that is going to be able to answer the phone and and, and say hey what, what is this you know what's this fee that i'm getting or hey can you lower my rate i've been with you guys for a year now is there anything you do out of rate or if you're on a reserve which does happen hey can i get my reserve lowered so it's very important that you do work with a, a credit card processor especially a sales agent or, or a, uh, someone like myself who has been doing it for a while especially because someone who's been doing it as long as I have is already successful enough to where they don't need to get such a huge chunk of commission off of your account because they are already have you know hundreds of merchants that they've set up that they're making money on so you know they don't mind you know i don't mind or someone like myself wouldn't mind getting you at a very low rate because i'm not in the, i'm not in the short term gain you know if someone's just starting and they've only been in the industry for about a year chances are their portfolio is very small so they're gonna want to get as much money off of every account as possible when starting i know this because this is how i was unfortunately but if you do get someone who's been doing this for a while who's been who's been in the industry for a while they're going to be very honest with you and they're going to to take the time to really help you out and and get the best rate possible for you or set you up at the best rate and get the get the rate approved by the by the uh, the risk department at, at the bank really uh, the risk department has a lot to say when it comes to um, to the rates that are set up it's not just the sales agent getting their commission uh, you know if i try to set some high risk merchants going to take a lot of work for us monitoring to make sure that there's no fraudulent activity or that they're actually fulfilling the orders especially if they're drop shape if i set someone up at you know 0.01% as far as our fee goes that's not enough money for us to cover the cost of answering your phone call you know the the, the administrative paperwork there's a lot of cost in obviously running a business so that's not a possibility for someone to set you up with that low of a rate but again you know you can you can definitely so yeah just make sure that you, you you definitely contact someone that you know is reputable obviously this video is a shameless plug for you to reach out to me again if you want to contact me i'm happy to answer there's many people that have contacted me since i started this channel uh, about a year ago and a lot of them i haven't even set them up as customers they've just called me because they they had a question about some of the high risk stuff that they're working with they've emailed me i'm more than happy to help anyone regardless if i get your account ultimately my philosophy in doing these videos is if i 
help enough people, I'm going to get compensated and I will, you know, get the word out there who I am and people are going to want to work with me. So that being said, reach out to me. Please subscribe, like my video. Really appreciate it. If you find any of my content helpful, just hit a like, leave a comment. I make a lot of very interesting uh, content on different types of industries and, and my perspective as far as the payments industry. Uh, so check out my other videos if this is your first video you're seeing of mine. But this is Didactus with David Lopez. Thank you so much for watching.